Welcome to the demonstration on motherboard architecture. In this demonstration, we will identify the different components on the motherboard and their respective functions. Let us first look at the motherboard itself. This is the main board. It is also called the printed circuit board. The circuit board is actually a sandwich of several thin layers. Each layer consists of the circuitry required to connect the various components on the board. In this demonstration, we are using a single microprocessor motherboard. This is the microprocessor socket. However, there are dual microprocessor motherboards and even quad microprocessor motherboards also available. These are memory sockets. Memory sockets are of two types, SIMM, that is Slimline Memory Module Slot, or DIMM, that is Dual Line Memory Module Slot. In this demonstration, the motherboard has DIMM sockets. These are expansion slots that are used for connecting additional input and output devices. Since a computer has limited serial and parallel ports, these expansion slots are used to extend its capabilities. Video cards, sound cards, network cards and other expansion cards are inserted in these expansion slots. This is the USB header. Motherboards can have USB headers with 4, 5, 8, 10 or 16 pins. On most motherboards, the USB header or pinout consists of 9 pins arranged in 2 rows which allows 2 USB connections that is USB 1 and USB 2. Normally, the pins for USB 1 and USB 2 are in separate rows. These slots at the back of the machine are called I.O. bus slots. I.O. bus slots are used to expand the computer capabilities. The I.O. bus slots correspond to the expansion slots. This is a PCI slot. Pentium and new 486 class motherboards have PCI bus slots. This chip is called the real-time clock or the CMOS memory. Its function is to keep the date and time on the computer and the CMOS RAM that holds the computer's BIOS settings. These are case pin connectors. These connectors are attached to the case LEDs, indicators and switches. The pin connectors vary in different motherboards. In some motherboards, these pin connectors are separate, while in other motherboards, these are grouped together into a large multifunction connector. In this motherboard, the pin connectors are grouped together. These are capacitors. Capacitors are used for filtering and smoothing signals on the motherboard. These are jumpers. Jumpers are pins on a motherboard that are used to provide configuration information to the hardware. Motherboards differ according to their jumper numbering, positioning and settings. The motherboard manual is referred to know what the jumper settings mean. This is a PS2 mouse header and this is a PS2 keyboard connector. Motherboards that do not have integrated ports provide headers on the motherboard instead. Headers are groups of pins used to connect devices or ports to the motherboard. These 
are serial port headers. Usually, there are two serial port headers. Each has nine or ten pins. However, only the first nine are used. This is a parallel port header. It has 26 pins. However, only 25 are used. These are IDE interfaces. Note that each slot is different from the other. On these two IDE interfaces, either the hard disk or the CD drive can be connected. And on this interface, the floppy drive is connected. This is the Intel 430HX chipset. In some PCs, one sees two or four chips, instead labelled with the name of the company that supplies the chipset for that motherboard. This is the battery. The battery is used to maintain information such as date and time when the power is switched off. In many older computers, it is a rectangular box, whereas in other computers, it is a flat round watch battery in a metal holder as shown here. However, in some computers, the battery is not visible. Instead, there is a lithium battery within the real-time clock package. These were the different parts of a typical motherboard. This brings us to the end of the demonstration on motherboard architecture.